All right, let's talk about methods. A method can be defined in many uh, different ways. It is an action, something we call to accomplish a task. It's typically a collection of statements, although it can be just one sim single statement. Um, it's a tool, something that we can use to get something done. We have that tool at our disposal. We can use it whenever we wish. So we can use it um, many, many times within the execution of a program. All right, now every method has this construction. It has a header, and then it has the method block. And that method block is always bounded by curly brackets. Now the method header has a number of elements, the modifiers, invocation, return type, name, and parameter list. And those elements always are presented in this order. We have the access modifier, the invocation, the return type, the name, and then our parameter list. The parameter list is always enclosed in parentheses. And again, we have our method block immediately following our header, and that method block is bounded by curly brackets. Now when we talk about an access modifier, we have two. Our access modifier can be public, and that means that the method may be called from outside the class in which it resides. A private access modifier indicates that the method may only be called from within the class in which it resides. Now the invocation can be non-static or, or static. A non-static method must be called by an instance of the class in which it resides. We declare a method to be non-static by not declaring it to be static. So again, a non-static method must be called by an instance of the class in which that method resides, and a method is declared non-static by the omission or the failure to declare it to be a static method. Now a static method may be called simply by using the name of the class in which it resides and then the name of the method. A static method does not need an instance of the class to call it. A static method must be explicitly declared to be static. Return type may be void primitive class but is always one item. Now when I have a method that returns nothing, it is a void method. A method may return something of type primitive or of type class. Whatever I return, there's only one item that is returned, and that item must be of a type that matches the type I declared that my method would return. When I name my methods, I try to do so using a verb, something that indicates what the method will do. Use mixed case, the, our camelback notation, and try to make that method say, I'm sorry, that method name say what the method will do. Something along the line of walk or walk fast. Now, when we talk about a parameter list, those are the arguments passed into the method. We have a number and type of arguments to be passed. The number is implicit. However many I list, that's the number of items to be passed. The type of each item must be explicitly stated. The arguments are the values passed. The names of the arguments are often called the formal parameters, or more often, the parameters. Here we see our method block. We have our method header and our block. Is that code to be executed when this method is called? And it's bounded by curly brackets. Here's a typical method. It is public. That is, it may be called from outside the class in which it resides. It is static. We need not have an instance of the class to call it. It's void. It does not return anything. Its name is print hello world and expects no arguments passed to it. And it simply prints out the string, hello world. Here's a private version of that same method. This method may be called only from within the class in which it resides. Here's another version of that method. This is a non-static version. Notice that I have not declared it to be static. It is therefore non-static. It is public, void return type, name is print hello world, and it simply prints out the string hello world. To call this method, I must have an instance of the class in which it resides created and then used to call this method. Here's another version of a method. It is public, static, void, named print a string. This method wants a string passed into it, one single argument of type string. And this method will return, refer to that single argument as my string. It will take the value passed in to the method and print it to the screen. Whatever my string may have been referred 
two, whatever its name was outside this method, doesn't matter inside this method. Inside this method, whatever was passed to it is referred to as my string. Here's another method, this one public static. It has a return. It's going to return something of type int. Its name is add numbers, and it looks for two arguments. The first, an int, it will refer to that as a. The second, another int, it will refer to that as b. In this method, I declare a variable of type int named c. A variable declared inside a method comes to life upon declaration and dies when the method ends. In this method, I add the values passed in to me, a and b. I add them together, store them into that space C, and then I return the value stored in that space C. I declared that I would return an int, and I did so. Here's another version of that method, doing in one line what we did in three. And I'm simply, again, a public static int add numbers, and I have two arguments, A and B. I add those two together and return them. Again, I'm returning back an int, as I had declared I would. So in conclusion, we see what methods are. We know that methods have this construction. They have a header and they have a block. And that header always has this construction. The access modifier, the invocation, the return type, the name, and the parameter list.